The Republican U.S. Senate primary in Colorado took a variety of wild turns this week. John Kaiser won his battle in court to appear on the ballot after coming up 86 signatures short last week. Meanwhile, Ryan Frazier and Robert Blaha are expected to go to court as well since they were both found to have insufficient petitions on Thursday. Uh, David, let's start with John Kaiser. Um, now that he's won the battle in court, got us back, back on the primary ballot, how much does that court fight hurt him? Zero. It was a, a great, in, I'm sure it was, caused him a great deal of stress and probably turned some hairs prematurely gray for him. <laughs> but no, he's, he's on the ballot now and he's a uh, formidable candidate within this context. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you judge it by how uh, progress now, uh, which always has sincere views and uh, <laughs> thoughtful things, he's the one that makes them panic the most, which was, you know, remember that the day Cory Gardner announced, they immediately said our biggest objective, you know, now is to stop Cory Gardner because they, they accurately perceived the threat that he posed. And uh, they've seemed to be saying the, the same thing about him so far. So that, that's a good indication. Um, the only thing that I think saves Trump, the Republicans, perhaps from a wipeout in Colorado and elsewhere is that even while Trump really could be the first presidential candidate to lose all 50 states, you know, he, he'll, he'll have to fight to hold states like Arizona, Mississippi, and Utah, uh, which should be in the bag. Um, he'll make George McGovern and Barry Goldwater look like titans. But he's running against Hillary Clinton, who is also highly disliked, uh, whereas those other things running against Nixon in 72 or Goldwater or Linda Johnson in 64, it's, you know, th those were at the time seen as sort of moderate, respectable people who you could cross the lines for. Hillary's, I, I think, a, a different thing. So it's not inconceivable a Republican could win this race. They're obviously going to start with close to zero name recognition in the general electorate, and we, we will see how they do at introducing themselves to the public. Eric, you've been watching uh, uh, and analyzing politics for a long time. Have you ever seen any primary season like this for the uh, U.S. Senate Republicans? Not for the U.S. Senate Republicans, not for presidential level. No, there hasn't been a primary <laughs> season like this. I think we can, uh, we can stipulate to that fact. Uh, just to David's point very quickly, uh, yes, Trump is going to have, uh, he has a very steep hill to climb to be a competitive presidential candidate. The map is more locked in, I believe, than David implies. We have now seen this ossified red and blue map. And no, Donald Trump is not going to have to work to hold Arkansas or Mississippi. Those are red states. I think it does put some states in play, the Georgias perhaps, the Arizonas perhaps, <coughs> some other states that have been red, if not bright red states, that might be in play this cycle. But it will not be a wipeout akin to McGovern or Goldwater simply because there are wipeouts of that magnitude anymore, just given the manner in which we've sorted into red and blue camps in this country. To the Senate race, the requirements for getting on this ballot by petition are pretty tough, and I think that's what we saw this week. Um, both the stipulation that you have to have, 50, I believe it's 1,500 yep. valid signatures in each of seven congressional districts. And if you hit that bar in six out of seven, that's not good enough. You have to hit that bar in seven out of seven. And even more, that once the first petition batches in, which was candidate Jack Graham's yep. petition batch, anyone who signed his petition is therefore ineligible to be counted as a signatory on any succeeding petition. So it pays off to go first, and those who went last, I think Frazier turned his in last, are having to draw their signatures from a, from a shrinking pool. It is a tough requirement. I think it's arguably maybe a little too tough. I'm going to be curious whether Blaha and or Frazier can win their legal challenge, whether they have as good a case as Kaiser had in front of a judge. And I don't know what the timing of that is. My understanding today, Friday, is the deadline for certifying that primary ballot. So I don't know if they're in front of judges as we tape this show midday on Friday trying to get a ruling before the end of the day or if somehow the, today's deadline is going to be pushed down the road for 48 or 72 hours. To my knowledge, and I, I don't have this verbatim, but to my knowledge that the Secretary of State's office will uh, be able to push back at least on the, the U.S. Senate primary uh, part of the ballot um, and won't, won't need to certify that for uh, a couple of uh, weeks. That's like the, the first deadline. But yeah, it's the, the, the Frazier and, excuse me, Ryan Frazier and Robert Blaha uh, only have five days to uh, dispute the, uh, the point. So we'll know at least by this uh, show next week. Uh, 
Kristen, as you look at this, is is there a happier guy this week in America than Michael Bennett? <laughs> no, the guy, the born into wealth, the son of a diplomat, you know, can the guy catch a break? But to, uh, <laughs> to uh, David's point, John Kaiser has zero name ID, but don't forget, in 2010, in a midterm election, there was a Denver school superintendent, rich guy, that had some fancy friends. Nobody heard, that guy never ran for dog catcher, and he went, right, went in a very Republican year. But I think what's interesting about all this petition hubbub, I think this is really going to change the nomination process for the GOP. The, the petition process was originally seen as a kind of a grassroots workaround, mm -hmm. the insiders at the assembly of getting close to the people. Today, it's like write a check to a petition gatherer, peace out, save yourself the time as long as you have the money to do it. I think the, the, the lesson from this GOP Senate primary is going to be do the work early, be Daryl Glenn, Go around, go to the crappy chicken dinners and the JJ dinners, not the JJ dinners, the um, uh, Lincoln. Lincoln, Lincoln Day dinners, yeah, with all the Republicans and really get out to all the counties and meet people because there's, that's the easiest way to get on the ballot. And I think you're absolutely right. I mean, conventional wisdom said Tim Neville was going to be who we're going to yeah. cover right now. And right now, he'd love to be talked about on the yeah. show. So I guess he just did. So there we go. Uh, uh, <laughs> Patty, <laughs> um, even though we don't know about Frazier and Blaha at this point, who do you consider the front runner? Well, I think at this point, I think Kaiser, Kaiser has a good chance on this. He's, he's well-spoken. He already has battled. He's won on this. But we have so many more chapters to go on this. For, uh, last week, I think I said, if I, you know, our lesson from, the, from the, de the convention was next time you should petition your way on. Well, now we see maybe that's not the lesson anymore. <laughs> One lesson would definitely be to not only have the, go to the chicken dinners, but hire <laughs> Dick Wadhams. That's your first lesson. <laughs> because paying $100,000 to a petition gatherer might not do it. You know, we talked earlier in the year when we were going to force high school students to graduate, take the civics class and pass this test in order to live in Colorado. Every Coloradan should be doing this now. What are people doing signing more than one petition for their Senate candidate? Everyone needs a quick lesson in how the primary works, how the caucuses work, and how the petitioning process works. 